The Heroes Modern Magic series is one that continues to evolve and change, building on its fundamental mechanics and presenting hundreds of hours of game content to consume. Like many fans of the series, the third iteration has always remained my favourite in large part due to its compelling art style, excellent factions, and being able to randomly generate maps to end an endless amount of replayability. The addictive loot of scavenging resources to improve your kingdom, and amassing a huge army before taking down your rival towns in glorious turn-based strategic battles is something truly unique from other games. It often comes down to how players use this and grows each faction, but every fan always has their preference. Though difficult in places, for this flashback I've considered how I would rank the 9 included factions in the complete edition, going by various factors such as unit strength, building cost, general aesthetic, and how often I choose to be them. Not to say I dislike any of the towns, but someone always has to lose, so let's start with the biggest loser. The Swamp Dwellers, full of lizard-like creatures and a base capable of slowing down non-flying enemies. For the most part, this faction is something very interesting, with the final unit Hydra being the only really cool unit that is capable of attacking all surrounding enemies. The only featured ranged creature is the Lizard Warrior at level 2 that just can't compete with other faction's units. The Mighty Gorgon is this team's MVP though, with the highest HP and defense for a level 5 unit that is capable of triggering the all-powerful Death Stare that can even deal with level 7 creatures. Fortress is less expensive than other towns, making it easy to grow stronger, but they just aren't very exciting to use. Considered to be the worst by many fans, I personally like using them due to their more interesting demonic design. Most of the units are some of the worst for their cost, with the main standard being the Pit Lords that can be used to effectively turn dead units into demons. Ifrits can be fun to play with due to their immunity to fire based spells, making powerful combinations when used effectively with Armageddon. Hellhounds are really the only other notable creature, with the ability to attack 3 adjacent enemies and also quite strong for a level 3 unit. The castle gate that can be installed to teleport to other inferno bases can be extremely useful on larger maps, and there is a lot of fun to be found transmitting to defend an unprotected base at the last minute. Kind of similar to my opinion on Fortress, I'm not really crazy about this town's theme of orcs and ogres. It does have a badass final unit though with the Bahamoth, that upon becoming upgraded is capable of lowering a target's defense for every hit, making him one of the strongest units in the game. The Cyclops is also quite powerful, being able to take out enemy siege walls from afar, although they are very costly for a 6 tier unit. The nimble Thunderbirds when used effectively can make quick work of other creatures with a chance to cause a lightning strike when attacking. As far as the base goes, it's one of the cheaper ones to upgrade, at least at the lower level, and the Ancient Bahamoth is a really good unit. Often said as the best and most broken town in the game, Conflux has some of the most effective growth in the entire game. For early game you have the likes of sprites and storm elementals that are extremely effective due to how cheap the pixies are and how powerful the storm's range attacks can be. The final unit Phoenix has the best production rate in the game for its tier and is also incredibly useful in battle by covering the most ground and upon being defeated can resurrect a large amount of itself back. It's clear why so many think this is the best, but I never really enjoy using them due to how little I like the unit's focus on elemental type creatures. As much as I might dislike the aesthetic though, they most certainly feature some strong creatures with many magic immunities that make them difficult to overlook. One of the best all-rounders, Tau is full of units with a focus on mages or creatures bound by magic. Admittedly it tends to skew late game, but earlier units like Gargoyles are capable of flying far in a battle with good production growth. The level 4 unit mages are extremely useful not only to harass enemies from afar, but also because they reduce the cost of combat spells by 2. 
The final units, Naga and Titan, are both terrifically helpful creatures that deal immense damage, with the Titan being the only tier 7 unit capable of a range attack. Building an army of Titans, although certainly costly, presents the exceedingly satisfying ability to lob lightning bolts at enemies from afar, obliterating them, and is the main reason I choose Tower. Literally the opposite of Conflux, the design and aesthetic of Dungeon is my favourite in the entire game. Built of many mythological creatures such as Medusa, Minotaurs and Mandacores, each new is an exciting to unlock and upgrade. The level 2 unit Harpies are immensely useful, with the ability to prevent any retaliation from a target, and also returns to an original position upon attacking, making it difficult to deal with. Its final unit, the Black Dragon, is also the coolest looking unit in the game, and is capable of covering great ground to breathe very damaging fire on multiple targets. With the Portal of Summoning building upgrade making it possible to recruit unique neutral units not native to this faction, Dungeon is one of the best teams to play, even though they are quite costly to upgrade. Utilising creatures in touch with nature like elves, Rampart is a faction with a good balance of unit production and growth while presenting some strong creatures to call upon. The level 1 centaur is the best in the game, dealing out a good amount of damage while also being able to take a hit and move around. Likewise, the level 3 elf unit is extraordinarily gifted, offering the only ranged unit option for the class, but is able to shoot twice dealing excellent damage from a distance. The final gold dragon unit is basically a worse version of the dungeon's black dragon, but it still makes it better than a lot of the other ultimate creatures. With the aid of the mystic pond and dwarven treasury to offer additional resources as turns go by, Rampart becomes one of the most efficient towns to play as. Basically, Castle is very good in both its unit strengths and abilities, with many of its units being close to or is the best at each level. Certain units have effective abilities such as the Archers and Crusaders, both capable of attacking for twice the damage. The Agile Griffin can fly into enemy land and perform a retaliation attack for every unit that it faces. On top of that, their final unit, the Archangel, not only has notably strong attacks, but they are capable of healing fellow units that cause them to pretty much be the most superior final unit in the game. Its only real loss is that there is no immunity for any of the units, but for the most part Castle is well-rounded faction capable of dealing with all assaults. My favourite by far, in a large part not only due to its wonderful undead aesthetic, but the fact heroes from this town have the necromancy ability that enables them to turn a units that die into their first tier unit skeletons. Although skeletons aren't by any means the best level 1 creature, taking on neutral minions on the map or defeating enemy heroes grants a constant restoration of lost forces that keeps your army a threat even after a heavy loss. The Vampire Lord 4th tier is ridiculously robust when used skillfully, with the ability to restore lost vampire units with each attack. Combined with the strength of the Dread Knights that deal double the damage at the 6th tier, Necropolis can be a nightmare to deal with late game. Its ultimate unit, Ghost Dragon, though one of the weakest when it comes to strengths, can infect targets halving their health points for 3 rounds, which can be extremely useful if they have a large amount of units. With the Skeleton Transformer back at base capable of turning any non-undead recruited units to Skeletons or Bow Dragons, Necropolis becomes a faction full of unique and interesting strategies that all feel rewarding to discover. Although other factions have many ways in which they are better than Necropolis, the Undead just has that extra level of expertise that is always fun to experience and keeps it being the one I return to again and again.